All right, everybody. You guys wanted it, so I have decided to do it. Uh, my solutions, I have three potential. Two are kind of examples of what some other people I've seen saying, and then one is um, my own. But how to fix the void, because it is really bad. Uh, so I decided to make a short list of things that are bad about the void to kind of like get us started with like problems that we need to fix. Uh, and the first is the potential to never get parts. This is the thing that people complain about like the most is that they do. Uh, they want to get like the Ash Prime chassis, I think it is. And they do like 17 hours of tier 3 survival. Uh, and they never get it. And 17 hours of farming means that you should get the thing. Uh, so that is a problem that needs to be fixed. Key shares are bad experiences. Uh, so what I mean by that is that whenever new content comes out, usually all of the keys that contain the new void stuff uh, become key share, which is a shitty system uh, that people can get one screwed over, someone has a key but will just never use it and whoever runs first just gets screwed and like everyone else gets to go with them and then they don't use their key so they can join more key shares uh, so it kind of perpetuates a scumbag community uh, if that if key shares were to be a thing that they actually like wanted to do there would be a menu where you pool your keys and you do all the runs and that would be a good thing to do that's kind of what I think about key shares, unlike the, unlike the short end. But key shares just generally uh, shouldn't be necessary, and that's bad. You don't want that. Uh, Luck-based progression. Uh, that means that no matter how well you play, uh, you're just it, you're just rolling dice. Like it, it's literally praying to the RNG gods, like everyone says. Uh, you're just rolling it, rolling it, rolling it. Doesn't matter if like if you can get there and you're like. If you've been playing for five hours and someone has brought you to a T3 and you get it, it, you lucked out. Like, just, there you go. There it is. And, like, that like that part of being able to luck out and just get a thing needs to stay. Because luck is fine if it's not your only method of progression. Because luck being the only thing that is stopping you from going where you need to go kind of sucks. There should always be another option. So that needs to be fixed, obviously. Uh, the repetitive nature of it. I'm just doing the same mission over and over and over and over and over, and it's in the same tile set. Um, doing the same exact mission like a bunch of fucking times. I know some people love it. Don't get me wrong. I have enjoyed doing some long ass survivals and just killing a bunch of dudes, and it's it, it can be fine. Uh, but a lot of people really don't like that, uh, and like some people just don't have the time to do it that much, obviously, uh, because. Not everyone has unlimited time to play games. Uh, and then these two other points are sort of less important, sort of more important. Uh, one is that it's not challenging for endgame players. People that have the builds, like tier four, they're going an hour and a half before anything gets like a little bit hard if they've got like a build they're comfortable with. Like they're it, it's a slaughter. Like the enemies have pretty much no chance whatsoever of like getting through to them and it makes the first let's say 45 minutes of like a survival just damn boring and like there's nothing really going on like no brain power needed <clears throat> for those endgame players uh, and the last thing is double farming getting keys and doing keys now this is sort of a different problem uh, because double farming wouldn't really be such a bad thing if more things gave you keys as it stands it's pretty much excavation, defenses, and survivals uh, that give you keys on like the star map proper, which you'll notice is kind of what everyone only does exclusively. Uh, if more missions awarded keys, like if you did exterminates and it was like, oh, roll a key at the end, um, mobile defenses, oh, roll a key at the end. Like, if getting keys was more organic with how you start to play, like if you, it's like, oh, we'll go through the star map and you just end up with like a bunch of bunch of keys and then just like completing the star map would give you a ton of keys and like that kind of stuff that's more of a star map rewards problem which i think might be addressed whenever they rework the star chart um and then the doing keys part is like the part that should be oh do i have that yes i do and then you go and do it and like 
I don't think anyone should ever run like 15 keys and it's like, oh, I'm out of that key and now I have to go farm it. Like that sucks. Like that, that's a, like that right there is like, well, I'll never get it. It's, it's very like a demoralizing experience when it's like, oh, I ran all 15 keys and I got 15 forma. That type of stuff really, really sucks. Uh, so that is also a problem that needs to be solved. Okay, so we've kind of like outlined what are the problems. Uh, so let's move this over. And I've got two solutions that I've kind of seen tossed around uh, and I've kind of like thought them out a little more. Okay, so uh, these are the two solutions that I have seen um, kind of tossed around a little bit. Uh, and they're both very simple solutions that I think have a lot of significant downsides that kind of need to be pointed out uh, before I talk about a more complicated solution that I have kind of come up with uh, over the course of like an entire week. And I think there's actually one change I forgot to make. Yes, I was thinking about this and there was a change down there in the lower section that I wanted to make. Okay, so anyway. Uh, this plan uh, is very complicated whenever we get to that, so it'll probably take a while to explain. But there are the three main paths, which one is the one I came up with, and the other two are the ones that um, I've seen other people suggesting. Okay, one is really, really simple, and it's also really, really short-sighted, like super short-sighted. And that is just adding another currency that can be redeemed for void parts. Now this is initially what I thought the void trader was going to be you would bring in your void parts and you would give them to him. He would give you the void money and then you would give him void money for parts you actually need. Now, originally I thought that was a great idea. And that is because of the, the first, like all three like pros to this plan is that players get what they want. You get really, really fast access generally provided like they aren't exorbitant like huge like boosted prices for like trading in uh, which would be like just terrible and that would be the grind grind uh, you get what you want so you have easy access to getting exactly what you want like no matter what you just run all your voids you just go ham on it and you just use that currency like new update drops you got a, like a ridiculous amount of currency just throw it at it and then you have all the things that is a downside first of all but we'll talk about the cons in a second uh, it makes all grind worth it, which means any void you're doing is immediately worth it. No matter what part you get, you're getting the currency, so that's great. This is also part of the downside, but that stuff is nice. Uh, and then it is easier to access top level gear. So uh, whenever, like let's say uh, you're a new player and you get to, like let's say like mastery rank five, for example. Uh, and then you get told that the Boltor Prime is the hypest shit that exists. You run all of your keys, like let's then like you get like a bunch of stuff, and then you just kind of shove it all at the Boltor Prime, get the Boltor Prime, and then now you have an end game weapon. That is not good. You should have to farm for a Boltor Prime. That weapon is really really good, and you need to access it later when you are ready to have a much more powerful weapon and like. You want to ease players in to more power because otherwise you run into a problem where we have like the mastery rank progression. Uh, a player that has a um, significantly like really powerful weapon usually will not want to downgrade into like a Gricotta. It's like, oh, I need to go level the Gricotta, but I really don't want to. And like you should kind of ease up the progression so that they're gaining a lot of mastery rank and then they're gaining those high end weapons later that they would want to level up. And that's kind of, I think, the intended progression in Warframe. So that is the downside to having easy access for those lower level players. Uh, okay, so the cons. Some of this um, is going to sound like business, 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 like making the money. And it's like, oh, this is just dirty business tactics. So the DE can make money. The thing that everybody has to understand is that it is a downside for DE to not make money because we all love this game. Like, that kind of go, goes without saying. Like, if you're watching this, you're invested in Warframe. It is important that DE makes money um, for, like, like whenever they, like, release a Prime Access, if 90% of their endgame players 
are just like sitting on like a million like a void currency then we'll like that ju that makes it so that like that's all of those players that are their end game players which is a large amount of the player base i think um that have no interest in like a prime access pack except for like maybe like the accessories thing that means like less money that de is making and like the farming optimization goes to the point where like people are just like instantly getting like the entire update uh and then because of that a lot of players stick around because uh, they need to get the new stuff like the people with like the collector mindset uh, and when they need to get the new stuff like it's a loop of them playing more and like the more you play you can justify being like oh well, i'll throw ten dollars at the game and get a cape that looks cool i've been playing all week and like that kind of like free to play like market rotation where you're making money because people are invested in the game it is a lower investment in the game if you are getting on after having grinded like a bunch in the past and just getting the stuff and then being like whatever and like i'm waiting for that to build now and now i'm offline like that's not a good way for it to be uh oh uh, this is important uh, it would be significantly less grind for the same reasons is that you would get done really soon with the grind sort of um, which means that DE needs to push out more content to make players happy because currently uh, Warframe is one of the games where I would say they push out the most content the fastest uh, and the community doesn't really like realize that I guess in like an MMO like um, like mindset like the the time between usual like MMO updates is usually like you, you could like in like a half a year and we usually get pretty large updates in a, a couple of months maybe a little bit different for consoles uh, because of like the hoops that people have to jump through for Xbox and PlayStation uh, to get stuff on those consoles um, but Warframe updates really frequently which is part of the draw of the game especially for someone like me is that I want to get the new stuff I want to see the new stuff the new stuff is interesting and it's fun uh, so making it so that it's easier like way easier to get to the new stuff means that they need new stuff faster to keep those people happy which is not really achievable like at like the rate that they push out content now i feel like it's probably about as fast as it's ever really going to get unless they significantly up like how many people work at de and that kind of stuff um, so that becomes kind of unattainable and because of like the like the first thing it's like they don't make as much money because people have like no incentive and then they need to make more content like those two things don't work together uh and then the easy access top of gear for goes actual progression which i talked about um and the other thing about this is that like the way to fix this system is to put an arbitrary cap on how much void currency you can have Th that is bad like that's not really sustainable like you'll just have like a shitty cap on void currency and like that like, then you're just you're trading out and like that kind of ruins like the in-game trading market of like getting parts because people are just like farming and then like getting this and then selling things for plat and then getting this and then selling things for plat and like doing that stuff and like that's okay but it really messes with like the economy of the game and i don't think that would be particularly good and like having like a cap that you're just trying to fill up like sin like it would just be syndicates only it would be like progression that is actually like meaningful and important not like a thing that's extra on on the side and like just fun to have along with the other things uh, so i don't really think that like just adding another currency is any kind of like real solution it is like it's a solution that would just immediately keep people happy but i don't think that it is like a sustainable thing that they could really do okay so uh this is the simple and ineffective thing that i think has even more downsides than it has um upsides because the upsides are pretty minor um and this is to have prime parts work like alerts um so the way alerts work is that the longer something has gone without being on alert the higher its chance it gets to be on alert which means that eventually everything in the alert rotation will drop it has to happen and that works for alerts 
Now, the problem there, there are, I'll, I'll, I'll say the positive things about this first. It gives an eventuality to a part. Uh, it takes, like, if, you're, if your luck is, like, just abysmal, it, it'll still take, a, like, a, like a, just a silly amount of time to get the part that you want. But it does make it, it, it eases the grind, which is okay. Uh, and it also uh, kind of equalizes the rarity of parts, because you're kind of, like, in this you'd be getting an equal amount of all things. Like, if you, like, every time you get to rotation C, like, your percentages would change accordingly on, like, what you can get. And eventually it would kind of balance out so that it's, like, always even, which is fine. Um, and it it makes the solution far more, and eventually you have to get the item. There are a lot of downsides to this. Uh, I think it works well for alerts. I don't think it works well for prime parts. Uh, the first is because it's really hard to code. It is like, you have four different people that have completely different drop histories. What does that mean these percentages are? Like, like what, like, the, this is the percentage that you want. You have four different people with completely different drop histories that could go back like months and months and months. And when you add new things to this drop table, what do you do? You make it like 1% like base. So if someone over here has not run it at all and the other three people have done like 50 runs, does that average out to be like 5%? That's not good. Like that's objectively bad. Uh, so like that is terrible. Also, um, nobody like far more as a solution like if you if someone has done let's say six hours of t3 survival and then you tell them that oh you just have to farm more that sounds shitty that's awful like that is like the worst thing you could tell someone that's like that's like if someone is poor you just be like, work harder man yo just work harder like that's not like that that's not like how this works like that is a like, if, if someone has, like, been doing it for, like, a huge period of time, and then you're like, oh, we'll just do it more. Like, that is a shitty solution to tell people, and, like, that is, like, that that's a way that you get people to just quit the game. Like, that is a thing that's like, well, I did th fucking 13 hours of T3 survival, and now I guess I'm done, because it'll never drop. Like, that stuff sucks. Um, and, okay, so other downsides, that means this problem of people not getting shit still persists for a slightly lower amount of people. Maybe vastly lower, but still, like, it persisting for anyone and there not being another solution, I don't, like, I don't feel like that's good. Um, okay, so, and then still requires potentially days of farming. Yes, uh, this is important that there is no clear representation of things being better. Alerts are kind of like a bonus thing that you look at and go, oh, I want that, or you're paying attention to it, and, like, the reason that the percentage changing is good is because kind of a bob on of like guaranteeing that those parts will come up eventually and like that stuff um but it being like like if you like if you're told that it's better than it is now because of these weighted percentages based on how much you run a thing and then you do it for six hours and you never get it and you were told it's fixed it makes it seem like someone just lied to you so for like a large part of the community like if they have been farming, like, if I, it's like, I've done five hours of T3 survival, and then they implement this fix, and then you do another five hours, and you still don't get it? It's like, well, fuck them. They're just messing with me. Like, it, it's that kind of, like, mindset where you, you need to be clear when you implement a solution, or else it comes off even worse sometimes. Uh, also, uh, cons to this is that farming is still repetitive, boring schlock if you were to do it this way. So that sucks. So both of these, I think, do a little bit to relieve the problem in that players can just farm forever and never get it. Um, but the downsides, I think, are too much that we should take the upside of them. Um, the, the first one is better than the second one. I think the second one is, like, the worst of all these options for sure. And that is still kind of bad so the, the goal would be to have a solution that can kind of fit a lot of holes 
without it being like a completely like new brand new system of like doing some weird shit like it should implement things that we already know how to do okay okay all right so uh, this is my complicated and balanced way uh, to fix the void so the first thing that this would do is add a void material whatever that means uh, it would be a material that you would get one of on every single void run or every other like there are a few tweaks that you could make there but I've kind of stuck with you get one of them per run and you would have a max inventory of 15 of these void materials now I'm starting this off because this is like the baseline for this now this initially sounds a lot like the currency one but this gets a little complicated okay so we would create a new tier of key, tier 5, that you need to craft. A craft-only key that does not drop. Okay, so, the difficulty of these keys would be like 70, 90, uh, depending on like the mission type, obviously a little bit lower for survivals and defenses, uh, because you will be, they, like enemies will be scaling. Um, but 70 to 90 is raid level enemies. Which is important because it means that there is an endgame tier thing that is not just the raid. So for those people that just like run the raid and then they kind of get offline. It's like this is another thing that provides the same level of challenge uh, without like the super heavy teamwork elements uh, that we could use uh, to keep people that want more difficulty happy. Uh, so obviously that would be very good. Okay, so now the one time blueprint purchase. Uh, we have that that system is already in there where we can purchase thing once and then just use it forever it would cost 500k i think that is a very fair price half a million credits um, because this solution is geared towards people that are at end game because ruin like you can't it's you don't want to affect people that are at mid to low game so 500k i think it's very fair now the materials that i've come up with for this I think are good because they are severe enough that people would not want this to be the only way that they do things. And they would still need to do other things in order to support this. So five void material, you have a max inventory of 15 of these, which means if you're at max void material, you can make three, you get three keys. I think that's very fair uh, because these are going to be guaranteed drops. Three Eroken Ciphers. If you don't know what an Eroken Cipher is, whenever you go and get a Corrupted Mod and successfully obtain the Corrupted Mod and get out, you get one Eroken Cipher. So it incentivizes players that want to use this to go and host these Corrupted Lobbies that are important to be like run and sustained because like players need these mods and it is a good like teamwork. I think it's probably like the best like teamwork building thing in the game. Where it's like, oh, I need other people for this. I can't do this alone. Like, you can, but it's so much worse. And I think that is a good experience for players to meet other players, which is nice. And then, like, having to do, like, three corrupted runs, that's not a very significant amount of time once you get good at it. So, like, I think that's completely fine. Uh, the third material, Argon Crystal, that comes from the Void. If you're going to use this, you need to have been running the Void. Um, because of the build time, which we will talk about, uh, it makes it so that you are purposefully seeking out to build this key uh, because Argon deteriorates, which I think is important for this. Um, and then uh, one tier four key. Initially, I thought that maybe doing a tier four key of the like mission type that you were looking for the drop from would be fine. But I think one tier four key is fine and then 50k credits so it's expensive enough like all like these things combined it's expensive enough that you will only do it whenever you need the part like it's like this won't drop for me I, i'll go build the thing because i really want that part it is like i have specifically like the materials and like how long like we're gonna talk about how long and stuff like i've specifically kind of tailored this to like weighing in someone's mind how worth it is it how much do i want this part which is important okay so whenever you craft the key you choose your part and it that part 
will drop. If you complete the mission, you get the part, no matter what. But, with some caveats, the part is only awarded to you, and the other players that come with you on this mission get a random part. The reason for this is because you don't want a round robin style of you build the Ash Prime Systems thing, I'll build the chassis one, you build the blueprint one, and you build this one, and then we'll all just go get it. That is not a good thing. That has a lot of the other downsides. So you are the only one that gets the part. Other players would have a chance at it, obviously, but it is a random part that they get. That's fine. Now, also when you do this, any part that you get that was guaranteed to drop. So like the random parts that the other players get are totally tradable. But if you get a guaranteed part, that part is untradable. That part is for you. You you did it, that part better be for you. You're not trading that to like, to like you're not, like that's not a good, like you don't want that, like there's no, like this isn't for people that are trading. This is for, I need that part, I want to build the thing. Which I think is fine. So here's the other thing. 24 hour crafting time for the key and you're only able to hold one which means you build it and you do it like you're not just like stocking these up like over time like you build it and you do it before you can build another one i think that's totally fair uh the keys however would be tradable because you can because it is such like a high difficulty i think it would be fine to be tradable and like obviously that helps like the trading market of like, oh, well, here you'll take this key, and like that's that, that it's selling potential for items, which I think is fine because if someone cannot complete the thing, we'll talk about what happens. Uh, and it's tradable because you can only hold one of these keys. If you could hold multiple, that would not be okay, because if you're trading it to someone, you trade it to them and they have one. They cannot hold two. You can hold one. So you can you can definitely like buy and sell things that way. I think that is pretty balanced, uh, and is fine. Now, this, this is kind of the important part. The crafted key is a completely random mission type, which means you can't just be like, well, I choose capture, because I'm real good at that. It's like, nope, if you're doing this, something's got to be random and it's going to be the mission type. And then uh, I kind of decided what, like for defense and survival, obviously I would get that question, like how long do you go? Uh, for defense, up to wave 20, I feel like is fair. Uh, and for survival, uh, I kind of bounce between 20 and 30 minutes a lot, but I think 20 minutes is fine at the if the difficulty like ramps appropriately. I think that's okay. Uh, and then the other thing, uh, I forgot to put something in there. Damn it! Uh, one attempt, and if you fail, that key is gone. That's completely gone now. All gone. The other thing that I meant to put in here, which I was kind of leaning back and forth on here. Um, is that you get one life, no revives. If you die, you're dead. Like, the thing, uh, I know some people are probably like looking at me like I'm silly. The value of a guaranteed drop is really, really, really high because you want this to be a solution, not the, like, not the end all be all. You don't want it to be like, Oh, well, I'll just wait for that thing to build, and I'll just do that again, and I'll do it again, I'll do it again, I'll have the thing I need. Like, you don't want it to, like, you still want it to be worth it to do these other missions to try and get these parts. That stuff is still important. This is a solution. It is not the thing that people do now. Like, it's not like, oh, well, we just go do this. Like, that's not what this is for. This, this is specifically to alleviate the it'll never drop problem. That is why, like that is that is the, the main problem with the void is that you have parts that are abysmally like rare, like just absurdly rare. And like let's let's look at this. Why is the void bad right now? Potential to never get parts. That fixes that. Done. Key shares suck. It eliminates most of the need for a key share whenever you can just go get that part yourself. Like there's the potential there to build the thing and go do it. So it definitely helps alleviate that. Uh, the luck-based progression, this 
is a skill-based progression. You are progressing. If you can do this, you progress. Guaranteed. That, like, that is completely checked off. Repetitive. One time, you do one mission. Like, at this point, you are choosing for it to be repetitive. At that point. And because it's a random mission type, uh, that alleviates some of the repetitiveness where you're, you have to plan for this mission. It's like, oh, it's an exterminate. I need you to do this. Oh, it's a defense. Oh, I gotta, I gotta get frost ready. Or isn't the Nova? Like, that, like, it requires more brain power. Uh, so it takes away a lot of the repetitiveness. Uh, not challenging for endgame players. So, I think some people will argue that this is not challenging still. That 70 to 90 is not challenging. Um, I think that it does not need to be... Oh, what? Oops, 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 oops. I can this down. Sorry about that, guys. It's kind of out of the way. I think that it does not need to be borderline impossible. Like, I couldn't... Like, 70 to 90, that's like roughly double tier 4. Which I feel like is fair. It could be like three times. That's also pretty fair. Um, that... Um, it's important... Like, you, you could make those numbers really, really abysmally high. You, like, you could be like, oh, level 200 to 300. Whatever. I think 70 to 90, because it is raid level, is fair. Like, that is where DE has clearly placed their endgame difficulty. Like, 70 to 90, actually, I think that is the exact range of the raid. I think that's how I came up with that number. I think that's totally fair. And if that's, like, that, this is the difficulty. Like, that's where it is. And I think that is completely fine. Uh, people that would argue that that is still not challenging, uh, congratulations, you're really good at the game. Um, I think that is hard enough to justify it. Like, I'm not saying, like, that's too hard for me. I could, dev like, that's, a, like, I, I could do that. Um, but it, it's not easy. You're not getting through that with unranked frames and shit. Um, so I think that solves a lot of the not challenging part. Uh, double farming, getting keys, doing keys, it doesn't really alleviate this. But I think that there are other things that need to focus on alleviating that, like the star chart being more rewarding and giving you keys and stuff. So, I think that is... That's a problem that's much harder to solve. Uh, double farming is... It's a weird issue. Uh, but it fixes, like, five out of six problems. I think that's pretty good. Uh, but let's look at, like, the pros and the cons. And obviously, because this is my personal idea, it takes with a little grain of salt. Think on your own about any more cons. I would love to hear what you guys like think. Are like, well, what about this? And what about this? And what about this? That stuff's really important. Obviously, I've only been like thinking about this for a week, like kind of off and on. So I haven't thought of every possible scenario. What could be bad? Like, oh, what if this happens? Like that stuff. Um, obviously, please tell me if I've like missed something where it's like well this is super exploitable let me know uh, so let's get this back out of the way okay so go over we'll go over the pros of this uh, players are still incentivized to farm regularly uh, this does not mean like on a schedule uh, this means that you would regularly be like oh well, what all do I need oh I need this from t3 survival I need this from capture I need this from defense okay and then you go out and you try and get the stuff you're still, like, the fast progression is still like, oh, I'll just go try and get it. Well, why would I not just go try and get it? Of course. Of course I would just do that. Like, that, you want it to still be, like, you're not running these keys for the void material. You're running these keys because, like, oh, I could get the thing. That'd be nice. That You want that to still be there because that's fun. Um, experienced endgame players are rewarded for their time put in. So, like, you put all this work into getting powerful... This is a very endgame centric thing that is now available to you. Which is good because it, it rewards people that are at endgame and have spent a lot of time with the game. Um, creates the potential for higher levels of teamwork. Uh, this is kind of to the point of doing the same thing that the raid does uh, in that you form this party of eight, and this is the raid. You form this party of eight, and everybody has a role. Everybody's supposed to be doing something. And you're like, figuring that out uh, this is to a smaller degree of that but like you get a mission then it's like all right it's an exterminate you know what would be good here on these high level enemies 
Let's do like a really good like Bladestorm Ash. That would be that would be good. Nova, debuff these guys. Get like uh, Excal. You can blind them. That'll be great. Loki, you can disarm them. That's awesome. It's like you form a party and you're thinking more about the interactions between frames and the advantages and disadvantages between taking like what pe like members of your group with you, which is good because you have to think about it. Uh, mindless, like, just, oh, fuck it, whoever, just get in here. Like, that stuff's bad. You have to think about it more. Uh, you have to pick and choose people to go with you, which I think is good. Um, uh, the, the use for Oroken Cyphers. Okay, so Oroken Cyphers right now, they only, the only thing they do is that they let you get Mirage. They let you create the quest for Mirage. Uh, I think that's silly that that's the only thing that they're used for. I think this is a really, really good use for them um, because it makes it worth it. It's like, oh, I need to get like one more Oroken Cypher to go build the thing. It's like, oh, let's start a vault. All right, you guys come with me. And then like that helps lower level players get to the higher level. Uh, I think that's really good. Uh, and it is, it kind of exemplifies uh, the importance of vaults and makes it, I feel like vaults are something that are, is overlooked by a, quite a few people um, like that aren't like specifically looking up like, well, how do I get this thing? It's like a vault. Well, what the fuck is a vault? Because they never really front end and explain what that stuff is. Uh, so it helps kind of get the word out about that stuff. Uh, regular farming is still good for getting most parts and is not obsolete due to the build times of the keys. Okay. So two things. It's a 24 hour crafting time, which is a day. A day is pretty significant. That's more than like Warframe parts take to build. I messed, I fussed around with it being 12 hours and I was like, that's kind of too short. I, I think that's a little too short. Uh, so obviously with crafting times, you can rush crafting times. If you are rushing crafting times for this, I think that's fine. Because essentially if you rush the key for this to like, let's say 35 platinum, you've spent 35 platinum and you're getting a guaranteed drop most likely. Obviously, the key is destroyed if you fuck up, so that's risky, and it, you're you're not incentivized to just like plat it out, like get 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 get, like all at once, obviously, which is good, uh, because you don't like want that stuff. But if people in the event that people do rush these keys, uh, that is good for DE because money has been technically spent on something in like the rotation of getting this stuff. That's like the reason we have build times is because there has to be an advantage to buying things, uh, which is fine. Uh, the solution mainly pertains to particularly infuriating situations. So this is the type of thing where it's like, I tried to get this for five hours, fuck it. I'm doing the thing where I'm getting the goddamn part. And then if you don't get the part this time, it's your own fault because you failed. That is totally fair. Like. It, may, it like definitely addresses that specific issue where it's like, that shit won't fucking drop. Which is fine. I think that's great. Um, guaranteeing drops don't become the end-all be-all. It's not the only thing people are doing, I hope. I hope that, that I've given this enough downsides that it does not become the one thing that people want to do. Because um, that would I, that's a huge oversight on my part, I guess. I, I think I've given this some significant reasons why you should do the normal stuff. Um, uh, it prevents the round robin instant farming, which is like I was saying, you build the one for this, 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 and then we'll all have Ash Prime. It gets rid of that. Uh, it adds to the trading economy. So prices are really, really inflated when things come out. Like let's like Ash Prime systems, for example. I've seen that go for like two, like on like launch day, that was like two, 300 plat. That's a lot of plat. Um, this helps out with that being more like, oh, well, it's like 100 to 150 platinum. So it, it makes it so that prices don't get silly, like exorbitant, which I think is fine. Like that stuff's okay. It, it, and it adds in in a way where you can sell, like you can build and sell these keys, which I think is great. Um, and then the last thing is that this is a goal that you want to work up to being able to do these missions consistently. And it's like an end game and like experience from playing for a long time. Like it is a reward for doing that stuff. Um, okay, so the downsides to this, um, there are two main downsides that are really hard to fix because I think it, if I, if 
these things get fixed, it creates more downsides than upsides, which is unfortunate. Uh, it does not solve the problem for angry and experienced players. Uh, if someone, like, is, like, like uh, let's say at Master Rank 5, that's fair. Uh, and they've been running Tier 1 Survival, trying to get, like, the Paris Prime limb for so long. Why can't I get to the damn part? Like, it doesn't really fix that. Uh, it doesn't, like, they, they can't, like, a, a MR5 probably doesn't have, like, the cards, experience, the frames necessary to go and do this. Which is fine, because in the early game they shouldn't be really going to do this, but, like, they can venture into the void and use the, the chance-based progression. This is for endgame players, as I said before. Um, so that stuff is kind of what it is. Uh, and the other one is a little more severe, is that it possibly segregates the community farther, uh, further. So the thing that I'm talking about with this uh, is that there are a lot, a lot of players that are at the end game that are just doing voids. They're never in the star chart. They're just hanging out. It's like, I'm MR18, 19, 17, 20. Like, we're all just hanging out doing some fucking voids. Like, those players are all at the top end. And then when new players get in, they're not... Like, they're also a large chunk, and then, like, in the middle, there's, like, this disparity where there are not really a lot of people, which is why, like, a lot of the star chart is so damn barren. Most, most also sort of because it's not really worth, like, doing the whole thing. Uh, so that's a problem. But that's a, that, that's another thing. Like, there, I think that is going to be fixed by, like, changing the star map. Uh, so, like, there's, that, there's still that midsection where, like, people aren't really doing it. Like, like they're not together. Uh, there's the new players and there's the experienced players. There's the big groups, um, which is unfortunate. And this would possibly move it even farther apart. Where you're like, yo, you won't care. Like you're not taking new players on certain missions, kind of. And like, I don't think it does it much, but it's something I was kind of worried about when I was coming up with a solution. So I put it on here just to kind of point. It out. Okay, so this is a lot of stuff. Now here's, here, this is kind of, um, I'm just gonna show like what all there is, like the reasons like why this shouldn't be too insanely difficult. Uh, one that I'll, like these are ones that I'll just go over immediately. Adding a material to all void missions. That's not hard. You add a drop that just, you get it. Super easy. They add drops to the end of missions. Like, oh, you got this, yeah, you got this, you got this thing. That's not hard. I think that's very easy to implement. Uh, definitely not too crazy. Adding a tier five key. I feel like that is a relatively small amount of work. Uh, I think that is not really even a big deal. Uh, okay, so the blueprint, uh, reusable blueprints. We already have that. Um, that is like you buy that and then you use the blueprint, blueprint over and over and over. That's a thing that already exists. Uh, the possible materials that I put out, the like argon, argons in the game, broken ciphers are already in the game. They just don't have a use. I think that then like they are or they are for crafting already. That they are already implemented that way. Uh, putting keys into crafting materials, like let, let's um, like let's go look. Like putting keys into crafting materials. So like the specific example for this is building dragon keys, um, where you have these materials and like you use a key. So using a key into a recipe is not uncommon. It's like not, not insane. There's no absurdity to that. Um, and then like 50K credits, credits as a material that already exists. Uh, now the thing where you're like choosing what part you want whenever you do build this, well you can build this and a menu pops up that you just select the thing that you're using to build it. So I don't think it is that much different to be like, oh, I want that when this is built. I think that is not even that crazy. I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, having a, like a limit on how much you can hold is something that is, um, I don't really think that is a thing. Uh, maybe, that might be like with the Ascaris negator, I think. I don't have that. No, uh, that might not even be it either. I'm not sure if they're... I'm actually not sure if that particularly... Like, that is in there. Hmm. I don't think that is, like, particularly difficult uh, to implement. Be like, you can only have this many. I think that's pretty simple. Uh, and then, like... 
crafting time, obviously that's nothing. Uh, making, like, things that are tradable and things that are not tradable, that, like, there are things that are not tradable and there are things that are tradable. That is already squared away. I don't think that's insane to be like, oh, we'll just do this. Like, this is not, this is, this is not, this is. Like, that doesn't seem that super hard to implement. Uh, it doesn't seem like a crazy solution. It doesn't seem like it's, like, any, like, insanely new amounts of code and stuff. Um, crafting things that are random, that's new, but I don't think that's really crazy. I think that's kind of normal. Um, and then, uh, the other thing is, like, if you fail, the key is consumed. I feel like that's a small amount of code. Like, you just make it consume the key whether or not you win or lose when you run the mission. That doesn't seem that silly. Uh, in fact, that seems fine. Uh, not being able to revive in a mission, though, that might require a little more. Uh, but yeah, I think, like, I don't, and like, the difficulty levels, like 70 to 90, let me let's see this. It's on her. Seventy to eighty is what the rate is. So seven, I think seventy to ninety is pretty fair. I don't think that's crazy at all. Uh, I think that is pretty normal uh, for like what you would want from this type of thing. So let me know what you guys think uh, of my solution, of the other solutions. If you think I was too harsh on them, uh, if there are more negatives to my solution uh, or any other like comments that you want or anything else you want me to talk about uh like i'm happy to talk about like all kinds of stuff like what's wrong with the star chart why is it so fucking shitty like whoa that was a little harsh whoa um and that kind of stuff also I, we are real really really close to a thousand subs so i don't know when i'm gonna plan that 24 hour stream because it seemed like people were kind of into that idea that like the celebration for like, getting to um thousand subs uh and like just having a place like for like a whole day just to hang out and then anybody that like wants to come and like ask questions and stuff can uh i don't really know when that's gonna be i uh, will probably have to ask off work to do a 24-hour stream and then like recover for 12 hours after that um but uh i definitely want to do that i think that's going to be a thing that i'm for sure going to do uh and just thank you guys for like subbing and just hanging out and commenting and giving me your feedback uh it's all just like really fun and i enjoy it a lot um so like just thank you to everybody i suppose is kind of what i want to get across there yeah uh but yeah tell me if you think this solution is good uh if you think it's amazing shove it in d's face i don't know tweet it steve i don't know i'm not gonna do that stuff um but thank you for watching and um, I'll see you guys tomorrow.